Yeah, he is. He's thrown me off in the presentation because... He is. He is. He's thrown me off. <laughs> so family, this is the presentation Life in a Cell. Yeah. Here at Constitutional Hill. Now, in life in the cell, we actually portray and show you the lifestyle that used to happen amongst these inmates when they were incarcerated together. Now, the oldest living gang is called the 28. Now, when they were actually established, they were established in 1899. So, meaning a small portion of the fort had non white prisoners. It's only in 1902 that they saw that they needed a bigger space. Yes, in a cell like this, which was meant to take up to 30, everyone ended up taking up to 60. 120 to the 90. So meaning 118 or 88 of these prisoners crammed in the space. Then 60, 90, even 120 with those two gentlemen on the outside. Yes, everyone, as we can see. Now, so it was a very segregating themselves from the other prisoners. That section was for the gang leaders or the gang bosses. Yes, when the guards were closed at door at night, those two men would be the enforcers in Sarja. So that section was called a matafule, as we can see, divided by blankets. Now, direct translation from Zulu into English, by the tables, that was a section for the gang leaders. Then onto the side, all of these men would be given code names so that they could communicate amongst themselves without the guards hearing them out. You'd find these three gentlemen onto the side called the sucker bumps, meaning the bodyguards or the lieutenant to the gang leaders. And yes, everyone, they protected the gang leaders whenever they wanted food, cigarettes, extra blankets, yes, to alleviate themselves from the ground, yes, in winter time, to keep themselves warmer. They would take it from these guys called the sardines. So they took the majority of the space. And why they were called sardines? Because they sleep in here to talk like sardines. So these were the prisoners who were imprisoned here for past offense, political reasons, opposing the government, but imprisoned here with murderers and robbers in Sarja. Yes, onto the fourth side, political and common criminals were crammed together. But onto the fourth, oh yeah, I'd say in number four, then the fourth side, political and common criminals were segregated. Why? So that political prisoners couldn't influence common criminals to change their status. But onto the side, common criminals and political were crammed together. Then you'd find the new arrivals, given the title the Bushies. They slept right next to the toilet and were in charge of cleaning the cell and also giving privacy to the gang leaders. So meaning that if one of those gentlemen has to wake up one early morning or one early night to relieve himself, he would wake up. Wake up these men. He enters the corner of the toilet. After entering inside, they take their own blankets, which they were sleeping in. Cover him like this, then the other gentleman does the same onto the opposite side. He does whatever he's doing. When he's completed, they let him out. He firstly goes back to sleep. And then lastly, these men go back to sleep with the same blankets. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that arrangement was arranged amongst the prisoners in Constitution 4 and 5, not amongst the whole prison system back then. Now, from this point of view, I'll give you more or less about three to four minutes just to have a read, take some pictures, then we'll be jumping onto the opposite side. Thank you. Well, sounds like slave ships to me. Look, just like slave ships to me, too. I guess he doesn't take questions. No, I guess he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> questions? What I can't that? even understand what he's saying. What is that? Right. that? British accent. <laughs> He's doing it too fast, you know what I mean? Like, like, like brother. Are you trying to do it? Try to get it done like this. Yeah, last time it was, it was so perfect. I, I, I used the recording from last time. The recordings were so perfect last time. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know why they got messed up. It was all in a, it was all in a sequence. <laughs> you got us over here, over there. <laughs> Oh, 
Thank you so much. Uh, yes. But nevertheless, family, uh, this is an incredible presentation. I wish we could have it more in sequence. But these are some of the, uh, the different uh, freedom fighters and the different people who are expressing who is a criminal. So laws are completely different around that time. So you can literally be jailed for a long time for doing something that nobody will bother you for today. It's not. Um, they got the wrong, they got the wrong color people up there. <laughs> <laughs> Looking and reading some of these men's testaments, who do you think were meant to be here? Yes, what also would happen is that we have the likes of the young Gandhi, we have the likes of the young Mangalis of Robert Sugupe, also in prison chair. Then we also have Edwin Mwano, who was a journalist, being purposely being in prison chair. Why? To record and expose what was happening inside the prison system of South Africa back then. Now, these were some of the laws that would actually bring in Saja. The oldest one, ladies and gentlemen, dates as late as 1856. It says, Master and the Servants Act. It says, it allowed for the rest of a worker who broke a contract, was insolent, drunk, negligent, or caused disturbance on his employer's property. Past offenders were forced to work on farms, and prison labor was hired up to farmers. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's why these men and women were given that posa mandla, so they could be working six days in a week. On the seventh day, that was the only time that they were allowed to stay inside the prison. But for those days, Monday right through to Saturday, they were going out to work these prisons. Now, from this point of view, I'll give you a couple of five minutes just to have a read, then we'll go into the Mandela Gandhi exhibition. Then after that, moving further. All right? Yes, my brother, do you take questions? You just like, no, 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 I do take questions. Give people a chance to ask No, I do take questions. I'm sure someone has some questions. <laughs> I have some questions. Sure. Everyone sure. have some questions. I have some questions. <laughs> come on, come on, <laughs> So you are the next good question. Explain the leprosy thing. Yes. So the leprosy thing is that, uh, as I said, now, during the early 1900s, so with these different types of diseases, that's when the British started uh, building uh, more or less like a containment center. Yeah, containment center, which was the end Robin Island with leprosy. So they couldn't actually, uh, how do you say, heal it. So it became a spread. So that's when three, uh, I'd say, the communities or people who suffer from leprosy were taken to Robben Island. But when the Dutch were given sole control in 1948 of South Africa, the British Navy, that's when the Dutch started at that time transforming it into a maximum prison that we know today. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, from this point of view, any questions? <laughs> that, was, that, that was my question. That was my question. My brother and I got a question. My brother and I got a question. Because you explained that they were being shielded from medical and once the doctor came, yeah, because when this is like this was spreading, like with COVID, or it was like the sounds. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Anybody in jail that time? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure hopefully this past year, the lockdown is up to the So family, that is a presentation, Life in a Cell. Very painful, and uh, you know, it's one of those things where you try to build up strength and energy, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's unbelievable, man, how they just rig these laws and you know, shake our folks down. Uh, to this point, what? <laughs> you, you departing us? No, no, I'm not departing. I'm just trying to get everyone so we can regroup. My brother is on point number four. Black people and right. prisons. So ladies and gentlemen, so the majority of us are outside. So ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is that 